If you deactivate the interlock on the bus, this warning here will come up and say warning interlock is deactivated. This is the okay mode that I was talking about uh, for the bus. Um, when you start the bus up, you turn the master switch on and get the bus started. Uh, the okay is telling you that it's okay to drive and the bus is running. Okay. Uh, the little battery below here is the low voltage. It's letting you know what the voltage is sitting at. When the bus is running, it's going to run at 27.2 or 3, right about there. If the bus is turned off, it'll, it should hover just above 24. If the low voltage goes below 24 volts, the bus will sense that and will activate what we call smart charging mode. Uh, the high voltage will then charge the uh, smart, uh, the low voltage batteries. There's uh, two different screens. I don't remember exactly what it says. Uh, saying that the low voltage is, is charging, or it, it'll say recharge the low voltage. It'll look like you're, it's asking you to do something. It's not doing that. It's just a, it's a bad translation when they put it in, into English. What it's saying is it's doing, it's charging the low voltage. So if you see here something that says something about the, the battery and the bus is turned off, um, just look here at this voltage. If it's 27 or above, it's charging that battery, the low voltage battery. So, stop request. AC failed. This is a this is A slash C, so it's air conditioner, not not AC power. And so AC uh, has failed. It stopped working. The high voltage battery uh, charged. So when uh, the SOC reaches 20 percent, the low uh, low battery please recharge will come on. And there's going to be a small beeper going off. Beep, beep, beep. And it's really low, so it's not real annoying. Too bad. I can barely hear it. Yes. Once that happens, how much time or mileage do you have on this bus before it shuts off? You can drive about 10, 15, 20 miles. At that time, when you're at 100 percent, you're going to get more than one mile per percentage. You're going to you're going to be able to do that. And if you're regening power back you know, coming to stop with the regen uh, stopping you. You can get more mileage than that. Uh, but once you get down to 20%, it's gonna equal about 1% per mile. Uh, you can watch, you know, I've, I've watched it drain, especially if you're using the heater and the air, air conditioner. It's gonna drain up just a little bit faster. And so, I wouldn't wanna be more than 20 miles away at 20%. And I could get, I could actually get in uh, before it got down below 5% if, uh, if I was driving it. That's, that's with my experience with these. I, uh, when I first started working with BYD, I was on the test line and uh, as a driver, and um, our job there was to test the buses before we delivered them to the customer to make sure everything was working properly and everything. And uh, it is so strange. We send out buses, or we, we'd come in and I'd drive the bus and everything was perfect. <laughs> I'd park the bus in the parking lot. Nobody even touched it. We'd come in the next morning and five things would be wrong with the bus. And they're like, what happened? You know, it's, it's just weird. It's really strange. And sometimes when we deliver the bus, you know, the, bu the doors are working fine when we left, when it left. But by the time it gets to the destination, the doors aren't working properly. And so we have to send the tech out and go fix them. It's just, I don't know. It's really, really weird. So, but uh, okay. So on the the doors, uh, if someone pulls the alarm or pulls the emergency release, unlocks the door, the alarm's going to sound off. That the, that door is open. Uh, the rear door, uh, the exit door is open. It, it's it's letting you know. There's two different doors. One is the the first one is the door's inoperable. Maybe something went wrong with that door and it, it, it can't find where it's closed. So it's going to try to close two or three times. And then it's just going to open up and give up, and that alarm's going to go off. This in here is when the when someone uses the emergency exit, uh, they unlock the door and to get up. Uh, this in here is just that the door's open. There's no alarm for this one. These two has alarm. Okay. So just real quick. So if that happens with the the door <coughs> with the rear and off, um, and we're stationed by aircraft and it opens up. Is there any type of way we can override that to get it to close so we can move, or we just have to sit there and? You're gonna have to you're gonna have to toggle it until it, it closes on its own. Um, the only way to move the bus is 
shutting off the interlock. So if, if, if the door is inoperable, it won't close for, you know, it, it might come to a closed position, but it's, it's still not reading that it's closed right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, it's not going to let you drive the bus. So what's your all right? Is there any? Yes. Is there any uh, <coughs> sensors in place to keep the door from closing on a passenger? Yes. yes. What Fifteen happens when? Door. door. What happens when uh, the hat, does the door automatically open up when it you know yes. the sensor? Yes. So what it is is uh, it's a sensitive edge on the door. On the on the inside of the door, there's a sensitive edge. You push you know, if it senses something pushing against it, it's, it opens. Open up. Okay. Yeah. I've seen it pretty scary sometimes, <laughs> and some of these buses that on our coach buses, some of those doors, um, they're, they're doors from China. I'm not even sure who made them, but they just slam closed. I'm like, man, I wouldn't want to be in that. If you know some, somebody's arm or something in there, but it, it, it's kind of scary sometimes. These these doors are have those sensitive edges and they they move quickly, but but not too fast. So, uh, the roof battery door. So there's a cover on top of the battery packs up on the roof, and uh, they have a door for the maintenance to be able to get in there to uh, work on them. And um, this is just an indicator here telling you those little doors up there are not locked down. So you have to get a mechanic up there and close those down. Uh, WC stop. So in China, WC, I've never, I'd never heard of it before. It's, they call it water closet. So when I first came and saw this, I go, oh, that's nice of them. They have a water closet stop. And uh, no, it's wheelchair. wheelchair. And uh, now that you don't have any kind of stop buttons on your bus, which I'm really thankful because kids be back there playing with those things and thinking that you. So the RAN fully deployed. So when you deploy the RAN, um, this is more for use on the other buses because the driver can deploy the ramp from the driver's seat. You cannot. You cannot. You have to go outside of the bus to deploy the RAN. Now why outside? Why not inside? Because Lawa asked us to put it outside. So it's only outside only, not inside and outside? No, only outside. That's so what if it's raining, snowing? Thunderstorm or rain. Talk to talk to the people that, that told us to do it this way. Where, <laughs> that's a surprise to me too. So I already it's on my list to do. They they, they asked for the they, they have a door outside of the bus, two doors, one for the front the middle door and the one for the back door. And uh, there's two buttons in there to deploy and, and so um, Lawa asked us to design it that way. Why they I wonder who at Lawa asked that. Yeah. Obviously, no it wasn't a bus operator. I'm, I'm just a messenger. I'm not the, it, it I'm was. the designer. Yeah, I'm just commenting. Um, yeah, um, that, was my, that would be my question. You know, how difficult it is to put a switch inside, running wires. Other, other buses have them. So. Okay. All the other buses have Lawa buses, though. Yeah, so. Well, That's just the four we have. But the Lawa, that... Lawa asked us to design. They, they sat down with our designers and designed the bus this way. But the switch was not too far out uh, when you. I was, you can play with the, the switch right here. You can't physically see the ramp go down. Mm. You could hit somebody inside. That could be a problem. Right. No, I understand why they did it. Well, that we, way. Yeah. yeah. Um, why did they do it? You said you understand why they did it. Why did they do it? I under, because that ramp, if you're outside, you can see if that ramp is, this ramp is really long. It's it's three feet long. Plus, it's, it's, it's about this wide. So basically, it was a liability. I, I believe so. Yeah. I, I, now the thing is, is they can put switches back in the back on the inside. The problem with that is you'll probably have kids and stuff playing with them. We have override switch in the front. Driver hit a toggle switch. Yes, there's an override. The yes, no, no, no. There, you have that. So, um, I know there's a way to make it to where it'll work, so you can do it from inside. It's just, um, I don't know why. Mm. I don't understand their thinking. You know they didn't. They didn't consult me. I'm just telling you this is the way that it is right now. Yeah. So Doesn't mean they can't change it. Yes. So the rest of the buses that are being made, then if we catch them in time, they can change it for that, or can they retrofit? Yeah, it? it's a EC, They call it an ECN. Okay. They can do. It. There's a lot of little things that were. You have 20, 20 buses coming, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You only have five here in the yard, so. Five, five now. now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
So uh, that was discussed, you know, we may find stuff that we need or, you know, that, in that, that was a very this is, we, this we is the reason from inside, you can't why. See it. Yeah, it might be and it's a small so thing.